Welcome to OM Report by Andre Alpa, your interview-focused podcast on topics from online marketing to internet startups. Right, so today's OM Report is with Brent. Brent, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Brent Satoris, and uh, I work at a couple different companies, but uh, I primarily work at Kyrae Media, which is a social media consulting strategy company. Right, so, so I, I read some of the case studies you published last year. You, you were kind of lazy this year. You didn't publish any case studies. Why is that? Uh, I, can't, I published like two or three, actually. I did. They're just maybe not very visible. All right, uh, but, but they're not on the website in the, in, the, in the case study section. Probably they're in the blog, and I missed them for uh, that reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, the thing with case studies is, is it, we have a lot of them, but we've been so focused on building our channels out. Sure. You know, with Google Plus getting a lot of visibility and a lot of growth, and with Pinterest and a lot of things that went through with that, and even with Tumblr, that um, it's really hard for me to take somebody off of that in order to do a case study. Right. So, so, so there was one, one of the case studies where even I know I have seen, you know, the, the story that you have pushed. There was this Chinese, Chinese gangster gangsters, with, a, with, yeah. a, with this, that was supposedly, it was a, like a, a lost mobile phone mm -hmm. and somebody downloaded the pictures from the mobile phone. And even I know I read that like a yeah, year ago yeah, when yeah. you guys have that pushed That kills it. me, that kills me because it's honest, amazing. It's been everywhere, um, this thing. The, there's one of my employees, so his name is- It's basically is, uh, a story that you guys made up. You found the no, pictures no, on no, a Chinese, no, no. No, yeah, well, picture on, like, on a Chinese yeah. website, but then you push them and, and published all the information about what you've did sure. publicly, so there's which a is guy, amazing. There's a guy that works for me, Nilesh, and Nilesh is a genius. I mean, he was one of the, he was the one who wrote the script for Dig very early on that would automatically vote all your friends, and it ended up causing a little, couple people to get banned and stuff. So I ended up hiring him. I was like, oh, well, you know, he, he can do there, that. There's potential there. There's potential there. And, and we had some conversations, and he's been working with me a long time, and uh, he actually does a lot of that. He's really good at identifying from various different sources. He'll go and find that type of content. So he came to me, and I actually have a website called Weird Asia News, uh -huh. which, and he, because he asked me, he oh, said, hey, I, I have it. these pictures I found. I think they'd be really good. But to be honest, this is the whole thing about success in social is it's very opinionated. So I looked at the pictures and I was like, yeah, all right, you know, there's some cool pictures, but it's nothing that's like crazy or anything. It wasn't like that outrageous. So I said to myself, you know, I said, you know what, we were trying to test Imgur and we were trying to see, because Imgur will show the view counts, yeah. and we wanted to see how Pix was doing with view counts and stuff like that from, from Reddit. Um, and so I was like, you know what, just throw it on Imgur and see, like, let's count the stats and stuff like that. So we actually submitted it and it didn't do well. It, 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 in, in the last minute before he went to sleep, he was like, you know what, I'm gonna throw it in uh, this other category on Reddit. And he threw it in there and went to sleep. And when he woke up, it had thousands of, it has 50 of votes. Million now. And then it, well, yeah, well, there was views. that, but I mean, it probably had even, you know, even more because it got reused across yeah, the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, has 15 million views, ended up getting links from everywhere you can imagine. Even Vice, Yahoo, Huffington Post, everyone, it had thousands of links. Um, yeah, it was really uh, interesting. But you have uh, all these equity now on Imgur, and it doesn't send traffic to anywhere. No, it's no, also no. hard to get a link from there, right? Yeah, there's nothing to get from it. It's, so it's if, all if you for them, before, not for me. You would have put it on I would have put it on Weird Asian News, but I made it decision because I thought, you know, it was last minute, you know, and, and there's no real benefit from that site either, right. to be honest. It's just an R&D site for me. So, But now it's know, a great case study that's yeah. for people to see what kind of stuff you can do. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it was really good. And we have a lot of interesting ones. I mean, we try to focus our case, you know, some of the experiences on, on various different elements that we see, like high comments, like sometimes comments, a lot of good feedback and stuff. There's, there's a lot of interesting things out there, but that one was last year, but we've seen even stuff this year that's doing really well. I mean, it, it's gonna continue to do well because as we are seeing, that's where the majority of the marketplace is really going is social. So, so basically what you do for your clients is they come up to you and they say, hey, we need a, we need a, you know, ideas for a campaign. Then you come up with a topic, then you help them also produce the content and also help it push through the various social well, channels. Is that how you For the most services? part, well, what happens is people will come to us and, and they'll, you know, it's, it, it's the same thing with everybody for social. Oh, I saw something, it was amazing, I want that. Give yeah. it to you. you know, can and, I have and, that too, right? And, and, and so, gu guaranteed. Yeah, Everything right. Well, guaranteed, well right? it's getting better. It's getting better. And I said this to somebody the other day. I was like, you know, for whatever reason, uh, social marketing is really closest to you know uh, visual marketing, brand marketing in the real world, right? It's it's very much like a commercial or a, a, a newspaper or a magazine ad, right? But and uh, and all the value ROI is based purely on what everybody else has seen, like you know a kind of an accepted norm of when you do a magazine ad, this is what you can expect from it. But there's not really hard tangible tracking on that, right? But for whatever reason, when we went to social media marketing online, we applied kind of a PPC 
ROI to it. We were like, I, I want to spend a dollar, I want to see five dollars. And, and it doesn't always work that way. It, it, it's extremely valuable. I think people are starting so it's to more understand like a tool that. more rather for branding than for direct conversions. Could well, you say it's, that? it's or, really, it's the longer it's game. Well, it's just like, you know, if you get, you know, when you would link build before, why did you link build? Not because you wanted to get conversions from that traffic. Exactly. You wanted the authority that came with that so, so that your site would rank. That it's an after. indirect effect in, 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 in a lot of ways. Like people don't realize that the majority of advertising is not ROI driven, not, not specifically, not purchase driven. I mean, when you see Nike ads, I mean, you can't click them, you can't buy them. I mean, there's, you know, they don't necessarily always have a store on their site. There's a yeah. lot of brands and so there's a lot of money that's spent on branding. And I think that you have to realize that there's a lot of levels of value. But I think the most important thing for people going into social is to really understand what they want. I mean, so many people go into social with no idea of what so they really are looking they to get come out up of and then it. You and you have to ask them these questions and help sure. them come up with answers that are And I have to consistent. make sure I can do something to help them get to their goal. If their goal's off, normally what I'll try to do is say, look, I understand where you're trying to go, but let's be realistic. These are Translate the ways that in which you're going to, you know, goals. something that's real goals and will, will what we're doing reach that and what do you have to put up in order for us to be able to attain that and what would I do to help accomplish that? And if there's a good rapport are, are and a good aware that they sometimes have to help you to be you for you to be able to help them I don't know that they're always aware initially but I'm very transparent with that I mean there's look to be honest there's I've learned over the years that there's no point in getting into an engagement with you know bad expectations or that's going to turn out to be a dispute or or have somebody feel like they're not getting what they wanted because I'm an honest kind of person I don't really you know I don't run like a typical agency so, so if somebody comes to me and they're not happy the yeah well most people don't find me unless they kind of know what they're doing okay you don't get a lot of people that email me that don't have some knowledge or they're not an agency or there's somebody who's within the industry most of my so recommendations come from within are most industry. of your customers agencies who have a client who want then the social media part that your your talents added to that it, or, it's or across the board I mean okay. I have a, a startups uh, you know big businesses fortune companies that, that directly we work with, book not that directly agency. book and then I have a lot of agencies as well so it really just comes down to what's the goal what's the medium that I have to work with and and how can I accomplish that goal or not accomplish that goal and a lot of times I tell people it's not you know you need to come back to me in six months when you're you know, set up, uh, and, I, and I don't do a whole lot of secret sauce. I mean, I'll tell people, look, this is what I think, this is how I think it's gonna work, this is what I think your percent chance is, this is what your job's gonna be, what my job would be. If all of this sounds good, then let's work together. How, how and if do, not, then let's not. How do people deal with, you know, the awareness that something also might not work in social media because it doesn't take off? Sure. Or, you know, is your guts feeling already that good that you can always say, okay, this is gonna take off? Well, we have a, a baseline because the way we promote, the old day was like aggregate sites, social aggregate sites, where if you won, you got to the front page and you got a lot of visibility, but if you failed, you got nothing. Well, that can still happen if you're just like promoting something without a network. Right? If you're just saying like, hey, I'm just putting this out there and if it catches, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But one thing that we've been doing for the last, you know, really for eight years now is building up networks and accounts. So we have like 20 or 30 Facebook accounts that have niche based. So we have like, did you know, today I learned or yeah. amazing photos or places you want to be. And we, we find and build out these different niches that can apply to different mm, clients. Right. And, and so when we, so have, broad enough. we have enough accounts and we have enough enough exposure and enough That's experience kind of the that we are able to have a baseline of success mm -hmm. that pretty much you know, equates to what you would pay for. Right. Uh, the, what, what you get on top of that is kind of like a lottery ticket. If it takes off and, and right. goes to the roof, right. then you're going to have massive exposure. But we work with a lot of publishers who right. we publish, you know, we will do like two or three campaigns a day. And just wow. the baseline alone. You know, some of them have like five or six websites or something, you know, real right. public. You know, we, we deal so with you have your own channels, but you also work with partners that have their channels. Sure. We, right. we do outreach and have partners and stuff. But when I say we work with them, I mean, they hire us to do promotions uh, for I their get it. content. I get it. I get it. And, okay. you know, the baseline alone is enough to, to where we've continued to increase our engagements over time with them because they're, you know, we have a good baseline from our networks. But right. the goal is, is to, to have networks that are, are targeted to where people really do want that type of content because we, what we see is you'll get something out Not there, just somebody sharing. will reshare it, somebody right. will pick it up and blog about it, you know, some people will do something with it. And when we get spikes, when we hit the front page of Reddit or if we hit, you know, really take off on uh, Facebook or something, you'll see, you know, 50 to, you know, 500,000 visits and some good links and some
some good exposure. But what the goal really is, is knowing where everything's going to be in two years. So right now... It's hard to say. I mean, it is, even but it's now, not. I was wondering, I mean, you know, there's quite a proliferation of different social networks, you know, because you can't have, you know, all the channels on Facebook that would understand. But then there's Wine, there's Instagram, there's, I don't know, Instagram videos. Probably that's sure. a, a different, you know, pool of of, of, of uh, channels. So, so to, you know, I mean, there, there seems to be more and more... Granted, but, you know, you, you can you say the same more thing. more and more channels? Yes, but you can... You know, yes and no. It really depends on where the average... It really you know you can take a world real world example to it and say look there's a lot of stores all over the place sure. but in certain areas of town people put a lot of stores together you have a mall or you have a shopping center mm. and when you do that you do that because people want that visibility that comes from being in a larger group so you know there's there are accounts like Instagram and there's places like but Instagram has limitations in certain areas and it can be really effective for certain people and not for others we tend to focus on the, the demand you know right. we know that, so if everybody's know, asking you for Pinterest, you will be building we'll, up Pinterest accounts. Yeah, and accounts we have or, Pinterest or accounts. We out. still build up in each account because you never know where it's going to have an effect or where it's going to have a benefit or where it's going to take off. So we, Is we, that kind of the area where you say you have to know where it's going to be in two years because you have to invest so much in building up the accounts that you kind of have to have the foresight, okay, you know, we're going to bet on, I don't know, the audiences in this. For the average network. person, I would say absolutely. It, it gets to be really tough. And, and that's right. one of the things that I really push on people to make a decision is really take the time to understand what the site is for, who's the audience that it's built for, how are they really using it, and how does it really really fit into your marketing plan long term. Not just as a band-aid solution like, ooh, I'm going to do this because it's, but how does it really like benefit you? Um, and, and how does it long term have an effect? Two years from now when you built up a community in Instagram, what is your real plan for using it for your company? And if you have a plan that makes sense, then do it, absolutely. But for us, we've been building accounts since day one, so we're really good at being able to use existing accounts to create new accounts. So when we're right. building our Pinterest right. accounts, we're able to from utilize all of our social networks to build those Pinterest accounts up quickly, right? So for us, it's a little bit different, but for the average person, it can take a lot of time and energy. So really, there's so many social networks, but beyond that, you have to really understand what you're trying to get from social in general. Right. You know, it's no longer really shouldn't be something that's like an SEO side budget. It, sh it should Understood. be a company-wide kind of initiative. It's a and, different and channel so than, than search. Yeah. It's a different I mean, channel. Well, it's, so, it's, a, it's a big part of search now. I mean, sure. social signals, you know, I was saying this earlier today. I was just having a conversation with somebody. The thing that people don't understand is that, like, let's say me and you are out at a restaurant and we love... Uh, uh, an item of food that we've had. Well, Which we we might go back. We might go back, and we we might actually write it, uh, a blog post. But if the average person, if you have a thousand people Take out there, a picture, put it on Facebook. Well, even before it. that, forget social even existed. What did people do for recommendations? They didn't Ask blog. Friends. They would just tell each other, or they would do it. Or, so there's a, a massive amount of recommendations and ref references and referrals and things like that that never got recorded before. It never got on the web. So we were using links as an authority signal, but how many people actually linked? You know, so now you have social... It's a strong bias if you want to take social, that as a recommendation. It, it could be, but the thing is, is that with social signals now, you actually have millions more signals. You have the actual audience. Right. It's not just the influencers, but the actual audience who are putting out there what they like and don't like and you're getting a so the big strategy from from the search engines and everybody else now is not the signals but it's how do you correlate the signals how do you determine the connection how do you determine when a signal becomes a real referral and a, and a real authority so even beyond all of that, I mean, social signals is really important because it's the first time we have everybody's voice. And, and, and somebody on Facebook has the ability to give it in two seconds, and I barely blog anymore because it's easier for me to just share it on my Facebook. So I think that, you know, when you look at where things are going, signals are really, really important. Um, and we're already talking about hiding that, you know, Google starting to retain their data more. I mean, if you look at where we're going with the augmented reality, with Google Glasses, with the way our devices allow for advertising, we're really looking at signals, being able to define what the signals mean as far as authority, and then applying that to whatever device through cloud data that you have. So I, I think that, you know, that's the value that people really need to look at when they're looking at their engagement in social media is how am I 
positioning myself to have an influence in the way that people are talking about us and the way that people are engaging with our brand because that's really going to be the authority in the in the future right so when you look at an individual campaign and let's say I, w I would say you know it has probably three parts like a planning and strategic part mm -hmm. then it has a production part and then it has a I don't know promotion push whatever, and promotion yeah. If you if you split the costs, you know where would they be percentage wise? What's like a gut feeling or like something I could hold on to? Is like a is like a third and a third and a third, or is it you yeah? Know, I mean, is it most really, of it promotion and and strategy and production is just a little so, bit. Or? So promotion ends up becoming the easier part of it. Really, but it takes the longest part to create. So it's really hard so to, to break it apart. Like, no, 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 no. A, to create the networks that oh, you can right. promote that, with. That will allow the So promotion. the thing is, is that like we might go out and, and I mean, we already it. have all right. the accounts. So for if you're talking about an, an individual promotion, you know, being able to say, hey, this is the type of content we should make, right? And this is the type of direction, and this is how it should apply to your overall marketing strategy and stuff like that. I definitely would say it's, you know, in the long term, it's equal. It's one third, one third, one third. To create the content, you know, it's an individual who's saying, okay, now I have the, the, the topic, I have the direction, now I'm just going to write it. And then you have the, okay, well, now we have to go out and promote it. Um, we promote things a long time, personally. Like, we don't just do the submit and forget kind of thing. So we actually promote for two weeks right. on every campaign. And we follow up and we do a lot of reporting to kind of figure out where the successes have been and where there's been kind of lulls. And we try to fill all that in so that the baseline continues to stay strong right but so so that can end up in our particular case being a little bit more right, of the right, equation right, right, right. but I mean I, I don't even look at it as three parts I mean it, it, it's it's a campaign it's it's the concept it's the content and it's the promotion and for me it's it's all one thing if you don't have a good place to publish it if you don't have snippets that can be easily shared if you don't have images that can be easily used sure. if and the that, site that doesn't the have a quality to mm -hmm. it then no Nobody's going to share it, right? So, so you're that's never the kind of in the creation part. Yeah, that you yeah, have yeah. To think up in the, in but the even just for the website itself, just right. you know the the page that it's going to be published on, and then the content itself. Does it have you know the right tone? Is it you know informative? Is it actually engage somebody? And you know, does it have the opportunities for sharing? And then once you actually are promoting it, then of course there's all the elements of going out and submitting to the right categories. Like Reddit's one of the hardest you know social communities to submit to and have success with, but mostly it's because nobody ever takes the time to understand it. Reddit's not a social community. It's a software that allows you to make your own communities. And people don't realize that. And so they'll go in and they'll say, oh, I want to submit to say business category. Well, business category has like a hundred active users at a time. Mm. You know, just because it has a large number of people that have signed up for it doesn't mean it's really active. So there's so many elements of Reddit that if you don't take the time to understand, you'll have no success with it. I, I wonder, what, what do you think, how do, how do social, the social networks that you use for distribution and promotion how do they look at what you guys do I mean is there like this slightly you know unperfect relation as as between you know Matt Cutts and his team and the SEO guys that are manipulating and then there's this black hat and, and there's gray hat area so are you yeah, probably I understand what you're, will, will you're there asking, be something yeah. you know will I, there be that hasn't over been time? an issue I mean it has for a lot of people and you, it has you mentioned the dig incident which is obviously old and it was automated so it's not the same thing I mean you know the stuff that you're doing people are they're following you because they want to so you're not forcing them to so it's it's different but well, I was wondering if it's if you see it in two years that the no, old, I, the social networks here's why, will I mean, up like that the, the reason being is, is that um, there's a couple factors to this uh, we have become acceptable for the idea of commerce I mean you know reddit right now is doing a massive campaign because they have no money mm -hmm. like you know they need money and so they're doing all this like gilded like buy gold for each other and you know you have to spend five bucks per person and give it for comments and they're focused and they're asking people to spend a lot the problem is is that you know Silicon Valley all of these startups they didn't really care about making money and the whole concept of oh if you have ads we don't like it and we don't want it and we don't want anything that's commercial and stuff like that but there's been a massive shift in the acceptance a lot more average people are coming online they're used to that type of thing they're not put off by it so the companies are starting to really understand that you need to accept the business angle if you're gonna have success so you're like the <coughs> professional publishers on these can you say that no but, but I think it goes even further than that it's like when we did it there's a lot of ways to do it dark and, and but we always thought to ourselves like I've always been like I worked when I, I was an alpha tester for Dig. 
So I, I went into the offices. I knew some people that worked there. I, we, we, we looked at their code that they were doing. Right. We, we looked at their business plans, what they were talking about, they were doing, how they were hiring. We would always determine what the direction was. And we knew where the line was. Mm -hmm. And we never crossed the line. So you know, we, we always were very careful with promotions that it was above board. This, you know, same thing, I know, I've know. i known Matt for a long time. I've known the guys at Reddit for a while. I worked with them. I knew, I know some of the guys that stumble upon it. I know the guys at probably, Bing. Probably you will, so, so, so probably your approach of, you know, being able to promote will be the white hat approach. But yeah. probably if, if, you know, the, let's say people who professionally promote stuff on social networks, you know, probably, probably the social networks will at one point in time start to say, okay, this is because. But I think the quality. You, you stuff, knew where the, the quality stuff is normal. If you talk right. about promoting on Facebook today, you know, the black hat stuff does, it doesn't work. Like, they're really good about, it's not about an algorithm that counts pluses and minuses anymore. It's about the correlation of the reaction. Right? Even Google, when they talk about social signals, <clears throat> they talk about it's not just somebody getting to your site through a social channel. It's about what they do when they get on your site. And, and, and that's hard to manipulate. You can send you know, a lot of people to, uh, you know, through social. You can, get, you can get your post out on Facebook and have a lot of fake channels like it, but that doesn't do anything for the actual success. Yeah, users won't use you know, it. it doesn't, and, and they are looking at so many levels. Algorithms have advanced so much. The way that they look at them is understood to be about quality so much that you would spend more time trying to game the system than you do if you actually so the, you know so the clean way is actually it. cheaper it's, or, it's, it's or better more it, efficient it's it's a lot better and trust me i mean we've done stuff we've tested with everything i mean we, there's nothing that we don't test you know uh, finding holes finding workarounds finding ways to automate things we do everything to test because we want to know what the real limits are but what we found the most successful is understanding all of that and then coming back and making a page the proper way mm. and, and, and building them out the proper way. And it really has led to us keeping accounts longer. I mean, not having to churn through them. Like Reddit's a great example. Reddit, you know, people think, oh, well, if I submit something from a client and then I submit a bunch of other content and then I submit another thing from a client and another yeah. bunch of content, then I'm safe from this correlation, right? I'm, I'm kind of like I've diversified my submissions. They're not gonna figure it out. And then they say, oh, well, you can vote on my thing but vote on like 10 other things. But Reddit doesn't care about your diversity. If it cares about your connectivity. So when it sees that five people are voting on this URL, no matter how many other URLs they're voting on, if the same, same five, five people, people are voting on this URL, and if that URL, no matter how many submissions you're doing, is coming from primarily one or two accounts, they will correlate that and they'll just ban them. But they don't ban them, ban them. You don't get like a notice. You just don't pop they, up It anymore. just doesn't show up anymore. So you continue to operate like you, think, you think you're it's winning. Working. And when everybody else, they don't even see your submissions. And because Reddit puts a fake voting count, so they'll show up votes and down votes as it goes, it's totally fake. You can't even tell, even on regular submissions, how many people are actually voting and, and negative voting. So that's not the first company that does that, that limits your exposure based on that. There's a lot of companies that say, you know what, banning people flat out is a waste of time. We just silence them. We just make it to where they don't they, they have think an impact. Everything is working like yeah. it should, so and, and it's not a lot anything. of people. But but we've just learned that you know, and, and and again, I mean, we've tried a lot of things. We have a lot of fun stories of things that we've accomplished and things that we've done for testing and stuff like that. And it's very interesting and it's very fun to talk about. Absolutely. And I'll talk about a lot of that stuff more in private. But the things that succeed the most today are really understanding the boundary and staying on the good side of it, but pushing the envelope. And you can have great success that way. We have had great success that way. I think that's a great way to end the interview because that's a perfect sentence for it. All right, thanks so much for the interview. Awesome, I appreciate it, thanks. OM Report and Andre Alpa would like to thank you for your attention. You can get more episodes on www.omreport.com.